I'm a big fan of that retro gaming aesthetic and trying to modernize it. And what better way to capture that retro gaming aesthetic than taking real life imagery and turning it into a 128p 2-bit image. I made a video in the past about this and about my methods for taking the pictures off of here and putting them on my computer, but that method was a little bit overly complex. I've since discovered a much, much easier way to pull my photos off of here in their raw, uncompressed format. It's going to enable me to upload way more Game Boy camera pictures. We're basically removing one of the limitations from a device that already has a laundry list of technical limitations. This video is sponsored by Omaze. Yeah, this is fun, but I wish I could go to an arcade right now. What if we brought the arcade to you? Whoa! That's right, Omaze and the Comic-Con Museum are giving away $30,000 to bring one of you the home arcade of your dreams. This is awesome! Use the cash however you'd like. Get wild, wild, wild! Buy every Time Crisis machine that has ever been made, or just one Namco Lost Land. And if you could tell me what that is, that would be great. Looks like a... Okay, time, but it's your dream and you can have it your way. Every donation helps support the Comic-Con Museum and their work creating awareness and appreciation for comics and related popular art forms. So enter today using the link in the description below or go to omaze.com slash W-U-L-F-F for a chance to win the home arcade of your dreams. Mom! I need one chance! Enter today. You might be asking yourself, why a Game Boy camera? Although, I imagine if you have to ask that question, you probably wouldn't have even clicked on this video to begin with. Technical limitations can force a unique style to a piece of art. Uh, Lego sculptures, chiptunes music, pixel art, Polaroid cameras. These are all appealing because of the technical limitations that force a unique style. The Game Boy Camera takes incredibly low resolution pictures with no color. It's technically 2-bit color, which means that each pixel has one of four shades of gray possible. This incredibly low level of detail forces you as a photographer to find really high contrast subjects. You're going to want your backgrounds to be either really dark or really bright, so that you can make out everything in the image. It's also terrible in low light, so daytime is preferred. Overcast skies are good too because it's not too bright. The Game Boy itself has some brightness and contrast adjustments, but its auto settings do most of the work for you, and adjusting these settings usually just makes things worse. So if you really need to, just do minor adjustments. The only other factor you really have control over is framing. And that's it. Contrast, subject, and composition are really the only factors that you have control over. And for some reason, I find this fun. You're also limited to the Game Boy camera's super wide lens. There are people who modify their Game Boy cameras to attach better lenses. A guy who goes by Eckler did this a little while ago. Kevin Kenson did this. A great Instagram account called The Game Boy Camera did this. It's something that I'd love to do in the future, maybe for a future video. It's not like that's gonna get you sharper photos or a better depth of field. It's really just gonna get you tighter shots. So anyway, I like the way the pictures look coming out of this camera. I should probably talk about getting the pictures off of this camera because that's the interesting part. With stock hardware, there is no way to get the pictures off of the camera and onto a computer. You can use a link cable to transfer photos between Game Boy camera cartridges, or you can print them using a Game Boy printer. Oh. Yes. Oh my God. It's beautiful. There's no way to digitally transfer them to a computer. Unless, of course, you count all of the third party and hacked options. Submodule.co is basically just a guy in Romania that makes these GB01 cart readers. It's a beautiful little device that costs around 50 bucks. Manufacturing was pretty backed up for a long time due to COVID, but they should be back up and running by now. 
This is the most user-friendly Game Boy cart ripper that I have ever seen. Its best use case is for ripping save files, but it also has a library of around 6,000 Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. Instead of ripping the ROMs directly from the cartridge, it will recognize what ROM you have and download it for you from its database. So basically, this is the only legal way to download Game Boy ROMs. You can also carry your save file over from, let's say, an emulator and shove it into your original hardware. So you can do this with a modified Pokemon save, or like I did, I finally got my Mega Man Zero save onto the actual cartridge. Yes, I'm still playing Mega Man Zero. Well, it's been a while, but I don't wanna lose my progress. And all that's very exciting, but that's not why we're talking about this today. There's other cart rippers with similar functionality. The GB01 has a specific functionality for the Game Boy camera. It will pull the images out of the save file and give you a PNG and a PGM for each. The PGM is the raw, uncompressed image. It's essentially a bitmap. It, I've never heard of PGM before in my life. But honestly, the PNG is just as good. There's even a feature to apply a color palette inside their app. So if you want to stylize it from there easily, you can. The first time I ripped the pictures, it gave me a little scare. The images were all distorted and glitchy, but I just unplugged the cartridge and plugged it back in and it worked just fine. There's also a handy button to delete all the photos off the cartridge. It is a little annoying to do this on the Game Boy itself, so this is a nice touch. There's another device that's slightly cheaper called the Wi-Fi printer. This device acts like a Game Boy printer, but instead of printing your data out on receipt paper, it sends the data over Wi-Fi to your computer. This is cool and useful for things like, I don't know, your Pokemon Master Certificate? It's useful for Game Boy camera pictures, but you'd still have to sit there and print each picture one at a time, and that kind of sucks. The GB01 makes life way easier. So once I dump these images onto my computer, I can run my Photoshop action as normal. You can watch my last video to get a more in-depth on how this action works, but basically it just scales the image using nearest neighbor and applies a gradient map. The only thing I removed from the action was the crop. Since I wasn't taking a screenshot of my Game Boy screen anymore, I don't need to crop out that Game Boy logo and all that black space. If you'd like to include that window boxing for aesthetic purposes, I'll leave a link in the description to an image of that window boxing so you can just plop your Game Boy picture right on top. I like the pea soup color palette because once you see it, you immediately know that this is a picture from a Game Boy camera. Black and white is also nice, but I think the layman needs a little poke in their frontal lobe to be able to realize where these pictures came from. I did, however, start experimenting with color palettes and I do really like the results. This blue one was inspired by my blue modded Game Boy screen from Game Changer Mods. I was also using the Adobe Color website to get some inspiration for palettes. Just make sure you're using four different color values because the contrast still needs to be recognizable in some way. Remember, each one of those four pixels needs to be associated with a color and they have to be four varying shades so that you can actually tell what the image is. So that's how you can pull the pictures nice and easily from your Game Boy camera. But here's a little bonus. Since that last video, I decided to try to live stream from the Game Boy camera. And that setup that I used was a hot mess. It was a Game Boy camera plugged into a GBA player attached to a GameCube, attached to a GCHD, attached to a FrameMeister, attached to an Elgato HD60S. This setup is slightly simpler. It's a Super Nintendo with a Super Game Boy and the Game Boy camera plugged into that. That is also going through a SCART cable into the FrameMeister. This is the highest resolution you can get with original hardware and a little bump from the FrameMeister. But I mean, it's still a lot of work to get to this. I also recently saw somebody who used a which is probably the easiest way you can go because that just straight up has an HDMI out that does But if you're a nerd that wants original hardware at the highest resolution possible, here you go. 
So that's really it. I just wanted to show you guys how much easier it is now for me to take my pictures off of my Game Boy camera and put them on my computer in case you wanted to try it out for yourself. It definitely makes me way more likely to take my Game Boy camera out with me knowing that I won't have to go through a whole rigmarole just to develop the photos. It also helps that with the new modded Game Boy, I can actually see what I'm taking a picture of. I also found out that this Game Boy with the camera fits great inside of a decent sized Switch case. I use this Satisfy case. And it can hold the GBO1, some extra batteries and some games on the top part, even an extra Game Boy if need be. This is the setup I've been rolling with, so if you see me post any more Game Boy camera pictures on Instagram, which you definitely will in the future, you can just refer to this video if you have any questions. So what do you guys think about the Game Boy camera or this method in general? Is there anything you see here that maybe could be done differently? Or do you get some ideas with some of this hardware? Like maybe you do want to put a hacked Pokemon save onto your original hardware. Or you could do like what Retro Future did with the GBO one. He used it to back up his save file so he can replace the batteries out of his Pokemon cartridges. Actually, he used Link's Awakening, I think. Anyway, leave your thoughts or questions in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. We got new videos at least once a week. Make sure you turn on notifications so you know when they're here. And we got streams over on twitch.tv slash wolfden. I'm almost done with Sunshine. I'm gonna move over to Galaxy. And thank you, Omaze, for sponsoring. Don't forget to check that link in the description if you want to win a $30,000 home arcade. But the most important thing that you can do to help us is just subscribe and make sure you subscribe because you can't rely on YouTube to tell you and share this video with a friend. A friend who is interested in retro hardware. Maybe they have a Game Boy camera themselves and this would help them out. Or they just want to save their saves from a Game Boy. And you could just drop a like on this video too. I like making videos like this, but YouTube doesn't like it when I make videos like this. It's not really relevant for their algorithm. So if you like this video, do any of that stuff to help it out. Comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Thank you very much. You have yourself a very good week.